All right, and welcome to the first in a series of shows that I would like to call Antiques Roadshow Holla. I'm Suzanne, and I am an antiques aficionado. I've been buying and selling antiques for about tw well, over 20 years now, and I had a very productive day. I've been out, I've been shopping, and now I'm relaxing. I'm in my comfy clothes. I'd like to give a big shout out to Mora Zadrumbo for these awesome man pants. They're pajama pants. They're supposed to be women's pants, but apparently they're man pants because they're about uh, a foot too long, so I have them rolled up, as you can see, and they're really comfortable, but they're very comfortable, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all the things I bought today, all the awesome deals I got, and talk a little bit about each one. It's uh, Christmas coming up, so I think I'm going to start with some of my awesome Christmas finds. And you'll notice that in a lot of haul videos, they have like really great bags from the stores. And of course, when you go to an antiques market, you get something that looks like this. So it's not exactly like very shishi, but I would like to at this point mention that the antiques mall I went to was Southworks Antiques Mall, which is in Cambridge, Ontario, for anybody who knows where that is. It's a great place to go. There's hundreds of vendors and the deals are usually pretty darn good. So I'm going to start off with one of my favorite things, tree topper. This is an amazing tree topper. I'm going to open it up. If I can get it and get it open. Well, oh, looks like it's taped. I'll just get a bit of a wrap. Packing tape, packing tape nightmare. Okay, well I can't open it right now. I don't think. Wait. I don't want to break it. They're very fragile. They're made out of blown glass, as anybody who collects antique tree choppers will tell you. This one is a very nice one. I'm going to keep working on it while I'm talking. It's a really nice one. It's made by S.S. Kresge and Company, Toronto, Canada. And if you know um, anything about Kresge, you'll know that that's the original name for Kmart. So it predates Kmart, and it's made in Germany. And I'm not sure about the date on this one. I don't know exactly how to date it, but the fact that this is made in Germany and not made in West Germany tells me that it's probably uh, prior to World War II, except the fact that it's also wrapped in kind of it's got plastic, so it's hard to date these things. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure. You know, hold it up so you can see it. It's a beautiful tree topper. I've been collecting these for about oh, five or six years now, and I have about. Well, I couldn't even tell you about 15 of them. And my husband made me a wonderful display unit for them. But I just really love how beautiful they are. And this one's really nice. I don't have one that's with such vibrant colors. Now, it was $24, which I think is a very reasonable price for a, a blown glass tree topper. It's not a fantastic deal, but I really love the color. So I went ahead and I bought it anyway. And it'll go on my display this Christmas. So let's put the box top back. It's decorated in a really nice kind of pine coney motif, which is really awesome. All right, and oh, we'll leave that for one for a minute because I've got a couple of other Christmas things to show you. All right, now, I also, last Christmas, treated myself, bought myself a feather tree. I've always wanted a feather tree. Uh, so it's, a, it's an original turn of the last century German feather tree. If you don't know anything about feather trees, feather trees were, invented or created in Germany thanks to a shortage of Norwegian pine trees. They had to find an alternative source for Christmas trees at that point in time. So feather trees are made out of, if I'm remembering correctly, goose feathers and grease. And they're sewn onto branches and then wrapped. And they look really interesting and they have little berries on the ends of each of the branches. But they're very delicate. So I bought mine last, well, it was after, after Christmas at Market Road Antiques in Waterloo, Ontario. Shout out to them because they're awesome. And it was a great deal. Here's a funny story. I put it in the car and I was so protective of it because it's so fragile that the entire way home I was holding it like this. I was driving with one hand and holding it like this so it wouldn't fall in the seat. And I was in a roundabout, and if you're down in the States, I don't know if you know what roundabouts are, but they're absolute traffic nightmares. I was in a roundabout and I got hit by another car in the roundabout. And in all the confusion, the feather tree flew off the seat and onto the floor, but luckily it didn't suffer any damage. I was really shocked because I was sure it was gonna be destroyed by the collision. The poor woman who hit me felt terrible, of course. I didn't tell her about the feather tree. Didn't wanna make her feel any worse. But at any rate, they're very delicate, and, there's, and there's, the one I have is small, so it takes these very small ornaments. So I got this box of ornaments. It was $18, which I think is a great deal. I don't know if you can see them. 
they look like that. The majority of them in this box. And there's a couple of just ordinary bells as well, which are also very nice. And then there's this very interesting wreath, and I don't know what that's made out of. It's some kind of, some kind of like, I don't know. I couldn't even tell you what that was. And there's some very tiny, very, very tiny, tiny ornaments in there. So I bought this for my feather tree. I have a few ornaments already. But what I like about this is I was pricing other ornaments in the antique mall. And there were a lot of people selling bells for $2 a piece. And so I've got basically here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bells, which would be $20 if you were buying them separately. And I got this plus a few other little odds and ends in here for $18, which I thought was a really good deal. So I don't know if you can see the whole box, but ooh, it's a very good deal. I was very happy about that. And then I splurged because it was my birthday recently and my mother-in-law, who's awesome, gave me some money for my birthday. So I splurged on this set and these are really, really fancy. I don't know if you can see them up close. They're very small, but they're beautiful. Some of them are shaped like acorns or different kinds of, of nuts. And some of them are those beautiful indented kind of reflective ornaments. And there are 13 of them. Now, they were a little more expensive. They were $40. But like I said, I splurged because they were so pretty. And I'll just pull like one out, especially so you can take a peek up close at one of them. So I don't know if you can see the detail on that one. I, for some reason, I'm showing all green today. Every one I pull out is green. But at any rate, they're beautiful little ornaments. Look at this tiny, tiny, tiny little pine cone. I have never seen such a beautiful little pine cone before. gorgeous now these ornaments themselves now this this particular box says glass Christmas tree ornaments fancy shape one dozen and they're made in Japan originally so that's going back a little way so they're probably from the 30s I would think if anybody has a better sense of the date you can let me know but at any rate that's where I would put them at probably um, but not in the time period after World War II, because as you know, that would, then they would be labeled made in occupied Japan. Now, where do I go next? All right. Oh, I'll leave that one for last. Now, in this bag, this is one. That, this is my Christmas present. I saw this and I said to my husband, who was with me at the time, I'm going to turn my back and I want you to pick this up and take it and get it for me for Christmas because it's so nice. And I don't know if you can see these clips. I'm not sure. I don't, they look like they might be ivory, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's illegal to import or export ivory nowadays. Of course, we know that. But at any rate, they hook up and keep the box closed. And they're really nice little clips. I think they're probably plastic simulated ivory. But inside is a, bo uh, a set of beautiful cloisonne style chopsticks. Now, guess how much? Seriously, guess. For six pairs of chopsticks and this box, which is padded, by the way, it's cushion padded. It's got these little special closures, $14. Oh, I thought that was an amazing buy. I'm very pleased. And I do like to use chopsticks when I eat certain kinds of food, not stew, obviously, Asian kinds of food, um, which I try to make sometimes. I'm not particularly good at it, but I do try to make some kinds of Korean dishes and sometimes pad thai, and they will be very handy for that. But it's a really nice box, I thought. Um, with a kind of a delicate floral design all over it and they're really beautiful so I said buy them for me for Christmas and lo and behold they happen to end up in my bag so I'm very happy about that and then oh this I had a very good day today I found some great deals this is a beautiful well now they describe it as a tea tin I don't know if it would have been for tea particularly because tea tins of this vintage are usually um, roll top canisters and this one's more of a lift top so I don't know and sniffing inside I can't really tell what would have been in there anyway and because the you can see the label is a little obscured there's been some damage to the front of the label but if you can take a look at the top you see how beautiful that top is excellent detail it's got some really really nice patterning on it so I got that and the best part of it was that it was only, okay, are you going to believe this? 
probably the least expensive tin that I've ever bought. And it says right on, it's a 19th century uh, Gunna New York tin, and it actually says right on the very top, or sorry, Ginna, I suppose, Ginna and Company New York, and it says they're right on the top. Now, you have to be careful because there are lots of people making reproduction tins these days, but a lot of them, they'll have very small print along the bottom that'll say made in China. So you have to be careful about that. But this one looks like it's, well, just from the patina and some of the wear on it, obviously, I would probably say late 1800s, so turn of the last century tea tin and well or tea or whatever it would have been it doesn't close tightly so i don't know that the tea back then was kept loose in containers and so you'd want to keep it kind of tight for storage but who knows it could have been anything maybe cookies yeah Hola. anyway i thought it was a great deal it's a christmas present i said to my husband again buy this for me for christmas and lo and behold it appeared in my bag speaking of bags whoop I didn't just buy Christmas things this time. I was perusing the stalls and I found this. It's a kind of vintage coach satchel and it was $20. And if you know anything about coach and you know how expensive coach items are, I thought that was a very good deal. And it's got a really interesting little leather tag on the inside. You can see what it says. It just talks about the kind of the, the manufacture of coach products. And it's really cute. It's got like pockets on both sides and it'll fit my wallet perfectly for those times when I don't really want to carry a huge purse around but I need cell phone, hairbrush, lip gloss, wallet, those kinds of things and I can just carry those around. But uh, I recently got a coach wallet for my birthday and so I thought this would be perfect to just tuck my wallet in and I got my little coach bag and it was $20 which is way better than going to the coach store and spending $200 on a bag. So always go vintage if you can. Good deals. A couple of weeks ago, I was at, oh, where was I? Stratford and Stratford Antiques, and they had a vintage Gucci wallet that was awesome. Original Gucci, $45, except that it would never have fit all the stuff that I have because I have way too many odds and ends in my wallet. So I said, I have to say no to that. And then the last thing, which I absolutely adore, and I'll pull this out. It's a little kind of Christmassy sled. You see it? It's adorable. And it's got the initials DH on it. And I have to tell you that in the same booth, there was an identical sled with the initials KH on it. And it makes me wonder if it was some loving father who made a pair of sleds for perhaps his twins, you know, Donnie and Kenny. I don't know. But at any rate, it's a great little sled. $30, which is a great deal. If you know anything about vintage sleds, they can cost quite a bit more. Um, it's a little bit dirty. And of course, my favorite trick is to take an SOS pad, if you've never done this, you know, because this is painted and it looks like it's either a really good, like an oil-based paint or a good solid latex paint. So you can wet it, take an SOS pad and very gently, very gently start to rub until some of the dirt starts to come away. And then you'll see whether you can keep going with it or whether you're going to damage the piece. So if you can get the dirt off without damaging anything, then you're golden. It's a, so it's a little bit grubby, but I think I can clean it up and make it kind of, you know, sparkly and it'll go at the back door to welcome our visitors for Christmas maybe with some kind of greenery on top at any rate like I said for the price $30 and it's very it's very solid I have a feeling it was probably only ever a decorative sled but uh, at any rate I thought it was pretty cute and I decided I should buy that so I think that's everything I had a pretty good haul today like I said Southworks Antique Market is a wonderful place to shop there are so many vendors and it's a great variety of things. So, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, and I'll be happy to answer them. Or if you know anything more about the pieces that I talked about that I didn't tell you, then you can let me know. That would be wonderful. Thanks so much. Bye.